Hello boys and girls, back for some more stories. The first book I'm going to read is Little Blue Truck by Alice Shirtle and it's illustrated by Jill McElmary. There's the little blue truck. Horn went beep, engine purred, friendliest sounds you ever heard. Little blue truck came down the road, beep, said blue to a big green toad. Toad said croak and winked an eye when Little Blue Truck went rolling by. Sheep said, bah! Cow said, moo! Oink! said a piggy. Beep! said Blue. Cluck! said a chicken, and her chick said, beep! Ma! said a goat, and Blue said, beep. Nay! said a horse. Quack! said a duck. Beep! said the friendly Little Blue Truck. Honk! yelled a dump truck, coming through! I'm big and important and I have things to do. I haven't got time to pass the day with every duck along the way. Room went the dump around a curve. He saw a puddle and he tried to swerve. Into the mud rolled the big fat truck and his big important wheels got stuck. His heavy duty dump truck tires were sunk deep down in muck and mire. Honk, cried the dump and he sounded scared, but nobody heard or nobody cared. Then, into the mud, bump, 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 came the little blue truck to help the dump. Little blue pushed with all his might. Now blue and the dump were both stuck tight. Help, 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 cried the little blue truck. Beep, 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 I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Everybody heard that beep, beep, beep. The cow came running with the pig and the sheep. Up at a gallop ran the big brown horse. Great, the goat jumped over the fence, of course. The hen came flapping with the chick and the duck, and everybody pushed the little blue truck. Head to head and rump to rump, they all pushed blue, who pushed the dump. They couldn't quite budge that heavy load. Then who hopped up but the big green toad? All together, one, two, three. One last push, and the trucks were free. Thanks, little brother, said Dump to Blue. You helped me and they helped you. Now I see a lot depends on a helping hand from a few good friends. Beep, said Blue, who wants a ride? Everybody scrambled to jump inside. Oink, quack, bah, moo, cluck, peep, nay, croak, ma. Beep, 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 away went the little blue truck. The end. I like that one. Now this is one, an older story. It's called The Little House, and it's by Virginia Lee Burton. And again, it's another little, right? We have Little Blue Truck and Little House. And Virginia Lee Burton wrote the story, and she also drew all the pictures. The Little House was very happy as she sat up on the hill and watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning, and she watched the sun set in the evening. Day followed day, each one a little different from the one before, but the little house stayed just the same. In the nights, she watched the moon grow from a thin new moon to a full moon, and then back again to a thin old moon, and when there was no moon, she watched the stars. Way off in the distance, she could see the lights of the city. The little house was curious about the city and wondered what it would be like to live there. Time passed quickly for the little house as she watched the countryside slowly change with the seasons. In spring, when the days grew longer and the sun warmer, she waited for the first robin to return from the south. She watched the grass turn green. She watched the buds on the trees swell and the apple trees burst into blossom. She watched the children playing by the brook. In long summer days, she sat in the sun and watched the trees cover themselves with leaves and the white daisies cover the hill. She watched the gardens grow and she watched the apples turn red and ripen. She watched the children in the swimming pool. In the fall, when the days grew shorter and the nights colder, she watched the first frosts turn the leaves to bright yellow and orange and red. She watched the harvest gathered and the apples picked she watched the children going back to school. In the winter, when the nights were long and the days short and the countryside covered with snow, she watched the children 
coasting and skating. Year followed year, the apple trees grew old and new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city, and now at night, the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. One day, the little house was surprised to see a horseless carriage coming down the winding road. Pretty soon, there were more of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon along came some surveyors and surveyed a line in front of the little house. Pretty soon along came a steam shovel and dug a road through the hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road. And then some trucks came with little stones. And then some trucks came with tar and sand. And finally a steamroller came and rolled it all smooth. And the road was done. See the road? Now the little house watched the trucks and automobiles going back and forth to the city. Gasoline stations, roadside stands, and small houses followed the new road. Everyone and everything was moving much faster now than before. More roads were made and the countryside was divided into lots. More houses and bigger houses, apartment houses and tenement houses, schools, stores and garages spread over the land and crowded around the little house. No one wanted to live in her anymore and take care of her anymore. She couldn't be sold for gold or silver, so she just stayed there and watched. Now it was not so quiet and peaceful at night. Now the lights of the city were bright and very close, and the street lights shone all night. This must be living in the city, thought the little house, and didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the midnight, dancing in the moonlight. Pretty soon there were trolley cars going back and forth in front of the little house. They went back and forth all day and part of the night. Everyone seemed to be so very busy, and everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth above the little house. The air was filled with dust and smoke, and the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came, or summer, or fall, or winter. It all seemed about the same. Pretty soon there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house. She couldn't see it, but she could feel it and hear it. People were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried by without a glance. Pretty soon they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses around the little house, and they started digging big cellars, one on each side. The steam shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other. Pretty soon they started building up they built up 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. Now the little house only saw the sun at noon and didn't see the moon or stars at night at all because the lights of the city were too bright. She didn't like living in the city. At night she used to dream of the country and the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. The little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty her windows were broken and her shutters hung crookedly. She looked shabby, though she was just as good a house as ever underneath. Then one fine morning in spring, along came the great-great-granddaughter of the man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees growing all around. They found out that it was the very same house. So they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked the little house all over and said, sure, this house is as good as ever. She's built so well we could move her anywhere. So they jacked up the little house and put her on wheels. Traffic was held up for hours as they slowly moved her out of the city. At first, the little house was frightened, but after she got used to it, she rather liked it. They rolled along the big road and they rolled along little roads until they were way out in the country. When the little house saw the green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. 
They went along and along, but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried the little house here, and then they tried her there. Finally, they saw a little hill in the middle of a field and apple trees growing all around. There, said the great-great-granddaughter, that's just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. A cellar was dug on top of the hill and slowly they moved the house from the road to the hill. The windows and shutters were fixed and once again they painted her a lovely shade of pink. As the little house settled down on her new foundation, she smiled happily. Once again, she could watch the sun and moon and stars. Once again, she could watch spring and summer and fall and winter come and go. Once again, she was lived in and taken care of. Never again would she be curious about the city. Never again would she want to live there. The stars twinkled above her, a new moon was coming up, it was spring, and all was quiet and peaceful in the country. Well, I love that story, and I hope you did too. I was so happy at the end that they were able to move the little house and she can live in the country and have her great-great-granddaughter live there in, her, in the house with her. So that's all for today. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and take care and I will see you again soon.